Hey, it's been a while. So today we are going to talk about new releases of firmware updates for the GFX 50R, 50S, and the GFX 100. But first, let me go get a coffee. All right, we're all set now. All right, so first let's get to the 50S and 50R. So we get improvement on the face and eye detection for again, both the 50S and the 50R. We're going to get some minor bug fixes, including uh, some issues that would happen when using multi-flash with the EFX 500. And also we're going to get compatibility in terms of rating the photos for third-party software for both JPEG images and raw images. And that works as well for the GFX 100, which gets a nice new feature. I'm talking about the new pixel shift ability for the GFX 100 that also comes with the pixel shift combiner software. So with that new feature, you will be able to capture 400 megapixel. Yeah, that's right, 400 megapixel images. And that's by using the IBIS system to shift the sensor around and capture 16 images to create one 400 megapixel file. So the pixel shift combiner software is compatible both for Windows and Mac. So to enable that feature, you simply put the drive dial of the GFX 100 to multi and then you click on the drive button and get to the pixel shift multi shot option. You can then choose the interval between each frame. So you can choose shortest so that will go as fast as it can. Or you can choose to leave one second, two second, five seconds or 15 seconds between each shots. So then make sure you use a tripod as the camera needs to be completely still while you take the images. So personally, I like to set the camera with a self timer of two seconds to make sure I can press the button and then let go and make sure there's no movement. Then it will start shooting the pictures. So you're gonna get 16 images. Then you will take your memory card and then bring your images into your computer and transfer them into a folder. Next, open up the Pixel Shift Combiner software and then you can choose to either save the combined image within the same folder as your images or you can select the output folder for the final image. Next, click on register and then get to the folder where your images are, select them all, and then click open. It will then import all the images within the software and start combining them. Now wait for the progress bar to be completed and then you can go in to your folder and you will find your DNG file. From then you can choose to import it into Capture One or Photoshop or Lightroom. And then you can make your adjustment to it. Now the way I personally think everyone will use it and the way I would use it personally is by shooting it tethered. And then you can do so within the Pixel Shift Combiner software. So simply plug in the camera with the USB-C cable and then plug it into your computer. And then in the Pixel Shift Combiner software, enable the tether shooting option. You will see that your camera will be detected. And then from the software itself, you can also choose the interval. You can choose where the raw files are gonna be saved to. And then you can actually shoot from the computer itself, which is my preferred way. Now simply click on shoot, then the camera will start shooting the images. And then after the shot, they will be transferred into the computer within the folder you selected. And then you will see that they will start to combine automatically. When completed, you have your final DNG file within your folder. And then from there, you can choose to open it in any raw converting software. So the pixel shift feature will be utilizing the electronic shutter. So we would suggest you use constant lighting. Now, if you really wanted to use some flashes, you will need to shoot at a shutter speed of one fifth of a second or lower, and that will be in 14 bit. Now, if you wanna shoot in 16 bit, the sync speed will be even slower. So that's why we recommend you use constant lighting. Now, if you wanted to shoot regularly tethered to Lightroom or Capture One, uh, you could do so and it will simply act normal as you click on the shutter, it takes the 16 images and then the files will be transferred within Lightroom or Capture One as regular images. Now, speaking of Lightroom, 
I also want to mention that the Lightroom Tether Plugin Pro has also been updated for the latest Lightroom 10 version. So this is a great feature if you want to do still life images, if you want to do uh, archiving work and things like that. Now we wouldn't really recommend this feature for landscape as you know, if there's wind, you know, branches from the trees could be moving and that would lead to some artifact, but it's definitely a great feature if you are into product photography, again, archiving, reproduction for museums and things like that. So this is a great feature. So here are some images that I took. I had so much fun photographing various objects with this 400 megapixel mode. It's quite incredible the amount of detail you can get. So I guess that's it. <laughs>